All right, this is our next episode of True Wrestling Fan Discussions. This is going to be the start of our Coliseum home video review series. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Frank, and let's get into it, man. Back in the day, they used to come out with a lot of pretty good Coliseum mm-hmm. video things. You know, they had the six volumes of Hulkamania, the Rampage, the World Tours. This is where you got to see the, the a lot of the stuff that you wouldn't because, one, you know, they only had the four pay-per-views yep. each year, and, you know, Otherwise, all they had was pretty much the house shows. If you didn't watch Superstars or Wrestling Challenge, so you got to see some of the some of the matches you would normally see. Well, Plus, yeah. you were able to to vote for your a match that you wanted to see. Yeah, not only that, the thing about Wrestling Challenge and Superstars at that point was it was mostly jobber matches. It was a oh it was god, a, it was all these. So on these Coliseum home videos, we got to see stars versus stars. You know, besides the Saturday Night's main event and stuff like that, and they would go all, kind of off, kind of off script, like it. They, they were they didn't always match up with the storyline, so you got to see guys fighting guys that you never thought were gonna were gonna um were gonna fight, you know. And uh, I remember just going to all the different local video stores, you know, mm-hmm. and going to the wrestling section and looking for for stuff. Bash in the USA, uh, they had a whole bunch of them. That I used then they to had the wrestlers. Get... They had yeah, they had like the wrestler specific ones. Like they had like the demolition video. They had. A whole... Obviously, the whole media, the, the Ultimate Warrior videos and stuff like that. So that, that was always uh. That was always cool because then there was matches that you look at the back of the box. You're like, I didn't even know these guys wrestled. I got to rent this. Yeah, you know, I didn't even stuff. know that, that these guys would lock up and stuff. Yeah. And, so this yeah, is the uh, only thing that was da- that made it bad was just Sean Mooney commentating on it. That's the only thing that was bad. Yeah, Mooney, about was, it. Mooney was right; he wasn't too bad. But, uh, but this, um, this is actually going to be WWF World Tour uh, 1991. Yeah, and uh, they they did a few matches, uh, a couple of matches in London, but for the most part, most of these matches were in the states. At various times, the the video itself was released August twenty second, nineteen ninety one. Mm-hmm. Most of these matches took place uh, around our af- uh, shortly after WrestleMania mm-hmm. seven. So here we go. The first match that they showed us on it with uh, host Lord Alfred Hayes was from London, England. Vince McMahon and Roddy Roddy Piper commented these first two matches, and this was from these two matches were from April twenty fourth, nineteen ninety one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first match was the Rockers versus the Orient Express. Now, know. again, I've said this on Royal Rumble reviews. Well, they always had good matches. Rockers oh, and yeah. Orient Express, they always had good matches. Oh, yeah, good definitely. Chemistry. Now, the one thing I liked about this is Mr. Fuji, you know, before the match, you know, gives a little whack to the Rockers. Rockers are like, you know what? Screw this. If he's not leaving the ring, we got something for you. They go to the back, come back a few minutes later with Andre the Andre Giant. Giant. Yeah, that was that was a good surprise. I didn't remember that watching this. I, I completely didn't either. This forgot was so long ago. Because I because I watched this on 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 video twenty something years ago. Yes. Uh, so that was that was a cool surprise to see Andre there at that point, especially you know he wasn't wrestling anymore. He was at the end. The only match I ever remember from this card. From from watching this was the Randy Savage match because this mm-hmm. was the match after his right. uh, loss to the Ultimate Warrior. We'll get to that in a little bit. But the Rockers and Orient Express uh, fighting in London, it, it was a it was a pretty good match. Um, Fuji once again uh, used the cane on Janetti in this match, and you know this time, you know Janetti, you know took him over to Andre. Andre t- kind of took care of him on that end, uh, choked him out. Um, he hit you know. Andre hit Cato with the cane, which kind of helped. And then the Rockers did their finishing move and got the pin on the Orient Express. It's pretty much at this point, it's like the Rockers, this is the only team the Rockers can beat. And it's a shame because they're coming off of their WrestleMania victory, yeah. first WrestleMania victory. And they're on such a high note. And so, uh, of course, later on, they're going to be you know broken up. We all know the story on that. But this match was pretty good, Get it, and this victory was as well. And this wouldn't be the only match for Shawn Michaels on this uh a card because they would be another one for him. The next one on the card was one that you wouldn't normally see, or you would a couple of years ago if it was in a tag team. It was Jim the Anvil Nightheart versus the Warlord. Now, if the Heart Foundation fought the powers of pain, yeah, we would see this match. But this right here, we we wouldn't normally back then see tag teams do singles matches. Right. It was this very is, um... and it was weird so this... to see too. So this is ninety one. I don't know mm-hmm. when this match exactly took place. Uh, April twenty fourth. It was that, it was that one. Yeah, that one was taped. Okay. So Brett is about to go on a singles run. So yeah, Brett, yeah, yeah. They just lost. They lost the tag titles. Yeah. So it makes so, sense. 
And and they actually in the net, the match beforehand they were talking about how the Nasty Boys will be on notice for the winner of this match because now they're the tag team champions. So the um, and the Rockers were sort of an on again off again feud with the Nasties. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, so Jim Neidhart's doing the singles thing. Warlord, they talked about how you know what British Bulldog did to him at WrestleMania. Oh God, the never-ending feud of the world. Oh, uh, it was a year year long. Every pay per view, Bulldog Warlord, those were Bulldog Warlord. I felt like those matches were stinking. The WrestleMania though. Seven match was pretty good, but once that happened, the feud kind of it outstayed its welcome. Yeah, yeah. like a mother-in-law. Oh Jesus! Just outstayed the welcome. So, and this match wasn't wasn't bad. Was I mean, a... again, we don't see Jim Neidhart wrestling in a singles no. match all that often. So, you know, if you're watching this for the first time back then, it's kind of weird. Mm-hmm. And I believe this was the fan the fan match that they. Uh, wrote in and they asked to see of all the matches. This is what oh, you're Jesus. asking Ooh, to see. Were... That was probably a rigged, uh, a rigged. Battle. Yeah, I, I, I had to be because I could think of ten matches off the top. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who would... that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I but... want to see Nightheart face Warlord. No, really? That's probably the last match I would want to see. But no, nah, you you'd write in. You want to see Bulldog versus Warlord? No. <laughs> in any event, though, the match itself wasn't bad. Uh, Warlord whipping Nightheart into the corner. He tried for to splash night hard in the corner. He missed. Um, he got, got on the way, but he, and he just rolls him up for a pin and gets the victory. Now, it was weird. One, Nightheart, obviously, he's not a singles wrestler, so you don't know what his finishing move would be. And number two, it's weird it's, that to see him get this victory on somebody that is an established singles wrestler, mm-hmm. but apparently Vince has lost all hope in. So maybe the steroids got to him. There ain't no telling. So our next match on the card was from Las Vegas, Nevada. It was uh, March 26, 1991. Sean Mooney and Lord Alfred Hayes uh, pretty much do the commentary for the rest of this card. Right, right, right. And on a lot of these, you'll see the uh, Superstars banner, the Wrestling, wrestling Challenge, Challenge banner, yeah. Primetime Wrestling banner yep. was on a few of them. Uh, this was the Macho Man Randy Savage versus the model Rick Martel. Mm-hmm. Now, the added bonus for this match was – he was he was honoring his contract because right, it was after he had lost. So he had Warrior. yeah he had one match left. After it's funny that you know his match after Warrior he's fighting a heel. I just thought that was funny. Yeah. Like, really, y'all just didn't yeah. sign this last minute. And and, and and Elizabeth is back together with him. Elizabeth's at ringside, which is, which is, which great is really to see. cool because she had just returned at WrestleMania. So yeah, that was actually that's a treat for the fans. Yeah. 48 hours later, oh, yep. and he dominated Rick Martel in fashion. Pile driver on the outside. We get the famous elbow and off it to the sunset. Okay. Savage and Elizabeth. I, yeah, I do like how Mooney was like, yeah, you know, this is Macho Man's last match. You're going to be able to tell your friends you saw Macho Man. I'm like, no, nah, not quite. I, he will. No, I, I'll, I'll tell my friends that Savage his last match was a warrior. Right. No, not only that, we'll be back six months later. Exactly. All this is was, I believe, um, an injury or something to where he needed the time off or whatever the case is. Yeah. So they did the storyline. I don't. I don't know. They never really officially told us the reason why. Just that when the when the time was right, I guess he decided to get back in the ring with Jake Roberts. They they reinstated him. But it was really good to see him getting the fan ovation he got mm-hmm. in his farewell. He uh, if this was his retirement, he got the win and got on uh, on top. And they said it was against a tough opponent in Rick Martel. Well, oh, you guys are overselling. That's that's like Jim Ross overselling Billy Gunn. It, it, you know, Rick Martel is I mean, not. He was a, he's a competent wrestler, though. He is, but by this point, yeah, I know, I know. it's winding down. But I mean, you, you're not. What are you gonna get? You're not gonna get Randy Savage versus Earthquake here or, mm-hmm. or Undertaker. So I mean, right, facing Martel and beating him is still credible. So. After this, they did a etiquette thing, which I thought I, I was laughing, and I was actually cheering for it. Sherry and uh, Brooklyn Brawler Brooklyn over there Brawler. trying trying to find out how they how they eat, and I'm like, somebody tie him up and just shut up. I mean, just I, I, it was funny because it was Sherry and Brooklyn Brawler. Mm-hmm. So now our next match was from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. It was on April sixteenth, nineteen ninety one. Um, and this strictly had the wrestling challenge uh, banner, and it was actually Mike McGurk, the the old uh, Sunday ring announcer for you, 
She always put me to sleep. I liked Howard Finkel a lot better. That's just me. What are you smirking at? Look, you liked her? I didn't, I didn't care. Uh, one oh, okay. This was Roddy Roddy Piper versus the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. Uh, Piper uh, coming off of a knee injury. Yeah, he was limping. Uh, he came out limping. Ted DiBiase comes out with the crutch. Uh, now, this is all stemming from Virgil being mentored by Piper. Mm -hmm. Virgil got the victory over DiBiase at, uh, at WrestleMania. And now Piper's returning to the ring. And this match was actually pretty good. Uh, the whole, you know, when Sherry got involved and Piper kissing her was all, you know, it's classic. Um, DiBiase going for a figure four leg rock kind of shocked me because I've never seen him really do that yeah. before. Uh, but Piper was able to counter it. Um, and then uh, when Piper uh, countered it, DiBiase collided with Sherry. Uh, once again, though, down, during the match, Sherry had distracted the referee, and DiBiase hit Piper's knee with the crutch. Um, he tried using the crutch again, but this time Piper stopped him and actually hit DiBiase with it. And uh, Sherry came in at this point. Piper just kept going with the crutch and wound up getting disqualified. So Ted DiBiase gets the victory over him. But Piper's not looking for a victory in here. He's just looking for revenge <laughs> at this point. So, but all in all, it was a good match. Yeah, it was good. Can't go wrong with those guys. Legends. No, yeah, exactly. And then, of course, we return to Lord Alfred Hayes and his etiquette thing. We're moving on. This is kind of like when they had the uh, Saturday Night Saturday Night Night's 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 Night, yeah, the comedy sketches and, yeah. Yeah, whatever. I think the funniest one to me was uh, the Halloween uh, with uh, Piper, you know, the bowling ball and, and all that stuff. And that was great. Rest in peace, man. That guy's a legend. So our next match is one that there was a feud back then that we all remember, but we never got to see any of the matches between these guys. And this was Jake the Snake Roberts and Earthquake. Yep. Now, the, what's the, what this, for the people that don't know, Earthquake on, on a Superstars of Wrestling uh, did his finisher, Earthquake Splash, yep. on Damien. Killed Damien. He killed Damien. So uh, now uh, Damien's older brother comes in, Lucifer. Yep. And this this is pretty much what set, I think would set Jake the Snake out Roberts off during his summer. That's why he becomes a heel, yeah. Be but we never, after we saw that on Superstars, we never got to see any match between them to settle the feud. So we get it here. Mm -hmm. And Jake Roberts is one that can hold himself against a, a bigger opponent. Mm -hmm. We saw him at WrestleMania 5. He handled himself against Andre the Giant. So Earthquake would be no different. Uh, almost got, he, he got the, the, the short arm clothesline and he dropped Earthquake, which tells you the power that Jake had. Um, but he wasn't going to get the DDT on the man. Um, he tried going after Lucifer the first time Jake stopped him. But the second time, he went after him. We all thought deja vu. Yep. He's going to do it again. Oh, no. But Jake um, uh, came out. He stopped him. He unleashed the snake, and that was a disqualification. So Earthquake wins, but Jake got to save his pet. But this was, th th this was uh, one that over the summer, I remember, didn't make any sense to me because they, they had the feud and they told you about it, yeah. but we never mm -hmm. got to see any match as a result. It was like one of those feuds that was almost a myth. If you didn't, you know, if you didn't catch something like this. Mm -hmm. So our next match on the card stemmed from March 17th, 1991. It was the Intercontinental Champion, Mr. Perfect, in a non-title match against Shawn Michaels. Yep. And um, now, great March see, 17th, man. so this is before, this was before WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. So, that, which explains why the boss man came out and did what he did. Right. Um, this match itself, obviously, you know, if, if you're watching this for the first time back then, you're not going to, you know, know the future of where these guys right, are. Right, right. That's the thing. You're looking at Sean as just a tag team guy who's got talent, obviously. We know yes. what he becomes. But it's really cool to look back and, and to see Sean, a, a young Sean, you know, way before he gets his – well, I shouldn't say way before. He's only about a year away getting a singles run. Yeah, because he's only two, two years away from the SummerSlam match. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So – um. It's unfortunate we never really got an extended feud with those two. Like they could have done. I know. They could have had they... some 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 great matches, man. Mm -hmm. Kind of a missed opportunity. Re WrestleMania match would have been a good one too. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, uh, Perfect gets hurt, and the stars never just align. 
Sean took a really, really bad dive. I don't know if you noticed. It looked yes, like he, he did. did. It looked like he hit his head against the gate. Right he, he, he missed. He overshot he, it. He missed perfect, but he hit he that the, the ring technician. The ring, yeah, yeah. And, but or it like he or hit, it hit him like a little hit, bit, but it looked like he hit like his gate. head. Yeah, he looked like That's why Giannetti came Gennetti down. Giannetti comes out, yeah. It looked like uh, he was overzealous and, and full of He was adrenaline. excited. He was excited. I, I want to make this look good. I like, and I, like, I like when they have like their little boxing match. Yeah, he's bit. like, you want to fight? You he's fight, he puts he's getting head. ready. Yeah. Uh, it's good, good stuff. It's good storytelling. He, yes, it was. This and, and this match didn't disappoint, despite the fact that Sean lost, which perfect momentum, it's going to happen. Um, Sean looked pretty good. This could have been a match that Vince looked at and go, you know what? I think I'm going to make him a singles wrestler. Because yeah. be. I, know, I know Sean eventually went to him and said, look, I want to yeah. venture out on my own. Yeah. So this could have been one of the uh, matches. All right, we'll see what you got and see but if you can do it. Boss man, boss man runs in and yeah, and because oh, and, and, then, and then with what I love about this is Bobby Heenan, yes, who was yes. managing Mister Perfect. I was going to mention this. at WrestleMania comes down here and they say, oh, he sold his contract. He's not his manager anymore. The reason why they said that is because remember this video is released this at the end in of August, the, at the end of August, and he had already left Bobby. Remember he got coach. Yeah. Oh, so you can tell that they dubbed this mm -hmm. in August, even though the match takes place. They wanted to kind of keep it like current. See, it's not like you have the oh, internet yeah. access now where you can yeah. look it up and see when this match originally right, took place. Right, 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 right. And is yeah, August it got released. He's under there. He's or, he's Bobby Heenan is on the, on the out there under his own free will. He's not under contract anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, I don't know the exact date of SummerSlam that year, but who, uh, I don't know if this got released before or after SummerSlam. So probably yeah, right that, around the time. It had to be around that time. But remember, but remember that that coach gets hired that summer. It was like a, yeah. I think it was on a funeral parlor, right? It was like a one, yeah, one and done deal. So it was before it was before SummerSlam. It was before okay. maybe like a month or two before that he had already. Uh, and by, and by that point, Perfect was already injured and. Yeah. You know, he tried to get through the match, yeah. and and he did. You know, it was a good mm -hmm. match. Um, this and like I said, this one just dis didn't disappoint. Um, but I just love how you know Bobby Heenan, the whole Bobby Heenan thing, like we just said, and then you know Boss Man coming down and he's doing his thing. He goes, "I want that title," and we talked about how I don't think Boss Man should have been the the, the, the number one contender. We're not going to go down that road right now. We've covered that extensively. So our next match kind of – I was scratching my head on this. Now, this one was from Tokyo, Japan. Yes. March 30th, 1991, Hacksaw Jim Duggan against Kendo Nagasaki. Now, it ends abruptly. Nagasaki gets the pin on Duggan. Now, they, they the, the announcers were saying that – He didn't well, understand. Well, he, he doesn't understand uh, Japanese, so as far as the one, two, three. Well, it don't – Yeah. So a, a hand on the mat is a universal language, I, I, so you don't need to to hear the ref yelling one two three they could language to out. know that you could kick out. I think that that was just the the American dub of the, the commentary. Yeah, like, I, I I think that over there in Japan he was just supposed to lose because he's not from there and he was just gonna put this guy over. But then, but the w way it happened was kind of. Bad. But I don't. I. Yeah, I know. I'm, I don't know what their storyline was, but you have to imagine that that was the U.S. storyline to protect Hacksaw. That oh, he could have kicked out. It's just that he didn't know yeah. the language, you know. And then afterwards, he uses the two by four on right, him. Right, right. Which it, is it's just it's just weird. It, no, it is weird because Hacksaw's a baby face. Yeah, but for him, and he's acting like the heel. He's acting like the heel. Yeah. And he doesn't understand uh, three, uh, one, two, three in Japanese. I don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that there. And we're going to move on. The main event was from Las Vegas, Nevada. It was the newly crowned WWE champion because I, I and I tried to look for the date of this one and I and I couldn't find it. But I, be, I believe it was just right after WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, it was after WrestleMania. Obviously, because mm -hmm. Hogan's wearing the, the gold. Mm -hmm. it, it was WWE champion Hulk Hogan teaming with the Ultimate Warrior oh, to Warrior. face Sergeant Slaughter, General Adnan and The Undertaker. The Undertaker yeah, this is cool to see, man. Yes, it was. And I really like the fact that Hogan and, and Warrior, each time, they would hit Slaughter, and then they go to the, 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 the apron and then get a cheap shot on The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. no, was was great. More, great stuff. What was even more funny is Adnan to start the matches in the wrong corner. Yeah, well, he's, uh, 
Because I see you see Adnan and you see the Undertaker. I like how okay, Lord, yeah. Hogan and Warrior are on this side, so you know Adnan's got to be in the wrong corner. I like how Lord Alfred Hayes was trying to like stir up some stuff. He was like, "Oh, look, Hogan and Warrior are not even on the same page. They're coming out separately." Shame on you. Yeah. Everybody tried it. Uh, DiBiase tried it at Survivor Series in the grand finale. Um, Bobby Heenan tried it at SummerSlam. I mean, this is this and get this, over it. Yeah, this and this is like a prelude to SummerSlam. Yes, and a future of Survivor Series because they got the Undertaker involved in this. It's not the Triangle of Terror. Yeah, it's two parts of it Mm -hmm. with the Undertaker and the Undertaker. I think at this point was still learning how to slow down Mm -hmm. for the character because he was rushing it a little bit. bit, But it was good to see him and Hogan in the ring that early. I I loved. Seeing him in Warrior in the ring, together. I love seeing I really, him in Warrior going at it, man. Yes, it was it was a, just a great yeah, feud. The visual, the man, just the visual of it, like it's like I don't know how to explain, it, especially as you know, being as young as we were watching it back then, it was like these two forces of nature, you know. Yes, and then imagine you know going forward past SummerSlam, it could have been Hogan and Warrior versus Roberts and the Undertaker, yeah, yeah. or even Savage and Warrior versus Roberts yeah. and the Undertaker. I mean, just. The 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 the, the thought, thoughts of the matches were were just endless, and seeing Undertaker coming off of WrestleMania beating Snuka and already facing Hogan and Warrior mm-hmm. was just great. Yep. And typical Warrior, just like at SummerSlam, takes the Undertaker down the rampway. You know, you know, you got this, Hulk. I'm gonna take him out. And you know, Hogan with an atomic drop on Slaughter and pins Adnan was kind of a little cheesy, but. It's what it, it, it's it's whatever. Yeah. Hogan and Warrior get the victory, but my takeaway from this was Undertaker in the match. Yeah, that that was what I enjoyed. Not Slaughter and Adnan facing them. Undertaker. Right. No. Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is one. I think to me personally, this is one of Coliseum Video's uh, better ones. Mm-hmm. I think Rampage '92 was another really good one, but uh, the ones they came out with uh, back then, awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, well, that's our review. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.